Hey everyone, welcome back to a new Big Goals Little Steps video. If you're new here, my name is Sarah and I'm the owner of Peppa Studios, which is my little teeny tiny baby small business that I created where I create hand-painted watercolor surface pattern designs. Now this is our eighth Big Goals Little Steps video. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, basically in this series, I am taking the big goals that I have for my business and then breaking them down into little steps. And so I've been doing these regular check-ins to kind of update my progress on these goals. It's been a great way for me to keep you all in the loop with what I'm up to and also for me to stay accountable to the goals that I've set out to do. Now, before I jump into this video, I do wanna start with a little bit of admin. And that is, I've been thinking about this YouTube channel a lot lately and I think it's something that I'm gonna do going forward is I'm gonna switch these big goals, little steps videos to monthly rather than bi-weekly-ish, which is what they've been historically. I think by doing them once a month, one, I'm giving myself a little more time to do some bigger goals, but also it gives me some flexibility and some wiggle room to create other kinds of content for this channel. So over on my Instagram stories, we've been having a lot of discussions about this. Things that I've been thinking about are vlogs, for example, like a studio vlog style video. So we could do something like a day in the life of somebody who works full time and also has a surface pattern design business on the side. Whoa. I don't know if that thunder was picked up on the microphone, but there's a big thunderstorm happening right now while I film this and I'm sitting right by the window. So <laughs> you might be hearing some thunder or some rain in the background. In addition to vlogs, I can film videos like Photoshop tutorials. I can show you my techniques for building patterns in Photoshop. I could do more behind the scenes, small business chats. I'm thinking about sharing things like what are my favorite investments that I've made in my small business? Or like, how do I set up a business bank account for my small business? Things like that, that I'm learning alongside with many of you. So if there's anything that you would love to hear me talk about on this channel, definitely let me know here. And just keep in mind that these Big Goals Little Steps videos are still coming. I'm still working on these big goals. It's just gonna be a monthly thing from here on out. Now that we've got the admin out of the way, we can jump right in to the goals that I set out to do in my last Big Goals Little Steps video. Okay, just a reminder in my last video, I actually did start with monthly goals for the whole month of May because I did all kinds of travel in May and I was kind of all over the place and so I didn't have as much time to film and edit these videos. But I did do plenty of work on my business during that month and I'd love to update you on that. Let's jump right into it. So the first goal that I had set out to do in the month of May was to finish immersion. What? So immersion started in, I wanna say February, late February, and it officially wrapped up on May 12th was when graduation was. And so one of the goals I had set out to do is to to finish everything, to, to watch all through module six, and I did it, woohoo! I'm finished with immersion. I didn't finish by graduation. Um, it took me a little bit longer, just given other stuff I had going on, but I have watched everything and I've watched all the live calls. I still have a few bonus modules and things like that to finish, um, but they're not all applicable to me. Like there's some bonus modules on like, using Procreate for your iPad Pro. And I do not have an iPad Pro, so like that one's not relevant for me. So eventually I do plan on doing like a full immersion recap video. I know I've had a lot of people reach out to me who wanted to do immersion this year, but weren't able to for whatever reason. And so I thought it would be helpful to do like a whole recap for people who are interested in joining for future years. So if you have any specific questions about immersion, about you know what goes on inside there, and also things like if it's valuable for people like me who would prefer working in rasters and not in Adobe Illustrator. If you have questions anywhere along those lines or about anything else related to immersion, let me know. I will put them all together and I will answer them in an immersion recap video. Okay, for me though, I think the long story short is that immersion is valuable in the ways that I kind of anticipated it would be valuable for me. So in the modules that are all about licensing your art and about creative entrepreneurship, there's a lot of value there. Um, there's stuff in there that I did not know before immersion and then now I do feel kind of ready to <laughs> go out into the world and start pitching my work. So I will talk about that more in the recap, but yeah, I did it. I finished immersion and I now I'm gonna have a little bit more time to do some more focused work on my business. 
now that that huge goal is kind of behind me. All right, the next goal that I talked about in my last video was to expand on the fruit collection or the fruit patterns that I had started making back in May. And I totally did this. If you remember in my last Pickles Little Steps video, I talked about my favorite pattern I ever made, which was the orange pattern. And my friend Julia also kept plugging this idea of doing more fruits. And since I loved the oranges so much, I decided to go for it. And so basically what I did is I went on a bit of a fruit painting bender recently, and I actually used my left hand to paint all kinds of fruit. So I've talked about this before, but it's this is a technique that I've been using a lot lately. I'm, I'm definitely a right-handed person. My right hand is my dominant hand, but I've been painting with my left hand because I'm trying to loosen up. I'm trying to be less of a perfectionist and embrace the wobbly lines and the messy look of painting with my left hand. And so I was like, you know what? Let me just paint a bunch of fruit and I'll just use my left hand and we'll see how it goes. So I can show you the paintings that I made. Again, they're not beautiful. They are messy and wobbly, but this was the basis for the patterns that I made. So here are some lemons. So again, I mean, look how, look how messy, right? But that's, that's what I was going for, yeah? So I did lemons, I did strawberries, I did some more oranges, just because I did the left-handed lemons, and I was like, maybe if I do the left-handed oranges, I'll have more consistency. I don't know, so more oranges. I don't know about these, but these are some blueberries. I don't know. And then some bananas. These are the ones that I started with. Okay, so I've put together a few patterns using these paintings so far, and I think my favorite one actually is the bananas, which surprised me a bit because, I don't know, I didn't love the paintings, but the pattern that came together, I ended up really liking it. And you'll see here in the pattern that I actually didn't use any of the leaves that I painted, and I ended up liking it way better. I think I was finicking with the pattern for a long time, and it just I wasn't liking it, it, it didn't work at all. And once I got rid of the leaves, it started to click for me. So big fan of kind of just the bananas for this one. So going for that monochrome look. I also put together the strawberries and this was a fun technique because let me show you. So in my paintings, I did not include any of the like seeds or anything on the strawberries because logistically when you're painting with watercolor, when I was thinking about it, I was like, all right, that's gonna involve a lot of teeny tiny little dots. And if they get messed up, then there's like no going back with that. And I don't know. So I liked the way the strawberries looked as is. And I said, okay, let me play with doing this digitally. So let me show you right here what these motifs look like with some digitally painted seeds on them. I really liked how they turned out. And this is a technique that I've been wanting to play with for a while anyway. Like I definitely know of people who do some back and forth between you traditionally painted or drawn or whatever art and then do some digital stuff. And then in some cases people bring it back out and do more traditional stuff and then put it back in. So it's been something I wanted to play with and I'm glad that I did because I really liked the way that it did turn out. So I follow some people who intentionally leave kind of like a paper outline around their motifs because it kind of looks like it's been cut out of paper, which is cool. And I like that effect in other people's stuff. So I did try it a little bit with the strawberries. When I actually built my pattern, I didn't use the cutouts because I think I got scared of them. I don't know. It's so different from what I've done before. But I do have those motifs like ready to go with that bigger outline and maybe I'll try it. I don't know, what do you guys think? Paper outline around the motifs or no outline? In my last Big Goals Little Steps video, I had also talked about doing some additional like coordinates and blenders related to these fruit patterns. And that is something I started doing literally today. So I'm starting with the banana pattern and I'm playing with creating some more simple coordinates and blenders. So updates to come on that front. Okay, the last goal that I had set out to do last month was to start digging into email providers, so email service providers. In particular, I had talked a little bit about Flowdesk, so I did spend some time doing this in May. And really where I am right now is I'm still trying to decide between Flowdesk and ConvertKit. There's a lot of benefits to both of them, and there's some drawbacks to both of them too, 
so it's a bit of a struggle. I think the biggest difference that you'll see in the pricing between Flowdesk and ConvertKit is that ConvertKit starts much lower. It starts at, well, you can start it free. If you wanna have like all the automation options and things like that, you have to pay a little bit, but it's something like $9 a month for up to 300 subscribers. But the thing with ConvertKit is as you increase the size of your email list, that price increases as well. And that price increase can be pretty substantial. Like for example, I know Bonnie Christine's email list is something somewhere around 120,000, 125,000. And so you can look at the pricing on ConvertKit's website and at that size email list, it's around like six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month. So that's pretty substantial. But at the same time, when you have an email list that big, the idea is your revenue is gonna be pretty high too, if you're doing it right. Flowdesk, on the other hand, so just for the email, if you don't want any, any of the like e-commerce stuff, like the ability to check out in your emails and stuff like that, then it's something, I think it's $35 a month if you bill it annually. And then on top of the pricing, there's obviously also functional differences between the two. A lot of people online say that Flowdesk is better for design. Like it's easier design. It's kind of like Squarespace functionality where it's drag and drop, pretty intuitive. And I hear ConvertKit is a little bit more involved. I don't know. It's kind of hard. I, I'm really torn between the two, but to be honest, I'm kind of leaning toward Flowdesk for right now. I don't know. Both of them have all the basic functionality that you would want or need in an email service provider. It's just these other things that make it really hard. Pricing is really hard for me right now too because obviously I'm really drawn toward ConvertKit because it has such a low pricing for me, for someone who has an email list of zero. It doesn't exist yet, but I have big plans to grow it over time. And so it's like, is that pricing structure something, that, something that's sustainable? On the other hand, Flowdesk is a lot to do all at once. So so you can bill it annually and that would be something like $420 all at once too and that feels like a lot so I don't know I'm kind of torn maybe what I need to do is do the free trial for both of them I'll touch a little bit more on that when I get into my goals for June okay so those were my goals for the month of May I think I did a pretty good job overall obviously I'm still a little bit hung up on the email list thing but I definitely made good progress on all of my goals so with that let's move into the goals that I've set out for myself for the month of June Okay, the first goal has to do with my website. You guys know I've been dragging my feet with my website for so long. Like it does not have to take you as long as it's taking me. But at the same time, I don't know, there are people, so for example, Bonnie, Christine in her podcast and in Immersion and everything, she'll say that you can put a website together in like one or two days, which is probably true. But to get it working the way that I want it to be working, it's a little bit more involved than what you can do in one or two days. <laughs> All that said, my goal is to have my website published by my birthday. Okay, I haven't actually said that on here in a public space before, but that's my goal. My birthday is in mid-July, so I've got a little bit over a month to do this, so I think I can do it. But here's the specific goal that I'm working on this month. So one of the very last things I have to do for my website is update the blog slash articles section. I have this goal of having at least three articles written and published when my website goes live. Articles kind of work in the same way that these YouTube videos do, which is that they are kind of a long-term strategy here. I know that the articles that I post are not going to get any traction right away, but certain articles that are highly valuable to people will get traction over time in organic search results, hopefully. <laughs> and so the earlier I can get helpful articles out there, the better. And so a, a few things here. I'm trying to work through this muscle of writing these articles because it's totally new to me. It's a new kind of writing. I am I come from a very academic background and so it's a totally different writing style than what you want in an article on some person's website, right? And you know, just being able to refine your ideas and everything like that. So it's taking me longer than I hope it will later on, but so far I have written and finalized one article. That one's great. That one's just my origin story. So that's not one that's gonna rank high in search results or anything like that. No one's gonna be out there really looking for Peppa Studios origin story, but I thought that would be a fitting very first blog post. But I'm also hoping to do a couple additional blog posts that are maybe a bit more helpful, a little more valuable. A pretty simple one would be how I remove the watercolor paper background in Photoshop. Another one I've started is 
Is there a market for raster art in the surface pattern design industry? Now I'll let you in on a little secret here. My goal for some of these blog posts or some of these articles would be to also make a companion YouTube video to go with them. And so the benefit of writing the articles first is that the YouTube video is kind of already outlined and written out for me, right? So for example, that video about is there a market for raster art in the surface pattern design industry? That'd be so helpful, right? Because that YouTube video would come together really quickly because all of the hard work is already done for the article. So to summarize, my goal is to finish writing two more articles for my website to get it tied up and ready to go for mid-July. All right, moving on to my next goal for the month of June. So my next goal is to create the layouts for one or two collections in my portfolio in InDesign. It's so exciting. <laughs> so I actually started this process a little bit last month in May. And so I have this vision of creating a portfolio that can exist both in a digital space, but also in a physical space. I know there's lots of people who use InDesign. Jenna Blackburn, you may have heard of, she does an, a course called InDesign Your Portfolio. I haven't taken that course or anything, but I've spent some time on Skillshare learning how to use Adobe InDesign. And I figure my skills are translatable because I know Illustrator well enough and I know Photoshop well enough. And so there's a lot of similarities, obviously with InDesign. A great thing about InDesign is that the books or portfolios or whatever flyers that you create on InDesign, they can exist in a digital space like embedded on your website and you can print them out. So it's optimized for printing as well. So that would be the vision here, would be to print out my physical portfolio so that I can mail it out to companies when I'm pitching to them. So the goal is to create the layouts for one or two collections. Now, historically, I haven't really designed in collections. We talked about that a little bit before, but I do think that that's a great way to organize your portfolio and to show some cohesiveness in, in your work and to show art directors too that you're able to think about your patterns and your artwork in that way. I also have to get some good mock-ups ready to go for my portfolio. So all big things, that's gonna be a big pull to be able to put together a portfolio in a way that I like. I don't know exactly my game plan for when I want my portfolio done, maybe by end of July. That'd be crazy. That would be awesome though, so that I could start pitching in maybe August. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. But that would be great. So hopefully in my next Big Goals Little Steps video, I will have one or two collections or mini collections ready to go in my portfolio on InDesign. So this next goal is kind of a big one and it's one that's been hanging over my head for a couple months now. And that's to set up a business bank account. Everyone says this is something they wish they had done sooner and I already feel like I'm kind of in the same boat. And it's a hard one because I have not made any revenue on this business, right? I've only I only have expenses. Like I've only spent money on this business. But I'm already thinking about parsing apart all the expenses that I've spent from my personal bank account on my business and that is already kind of a nightmare to think about because that ranges from things like up tube of watercolor paper all the way up to like the $2,000 immersion class that I took, right? So I think being able to consolidate everything into a business account, even if I'm just funding it with my own money from my personal account for right now, I, I think that might be the way to go. So that's a big goal that I have for the month of June. And it's something that's been on my to-do list for quite a while at this point. So I am glad to have it written down because that means that it's gonna happen. <laughs> All right, I have just one more goal that I've set out for the month of June and that's to start a free trial on Flowdesk and ConvertKit. I really wanna try these and see how they are. Now this is kind of related to my previous goal which is to set up a bank account because I was thinking about this and signing up for a subscription service for my business that it just feels messy, right? To do that on my personal account. So what I would like to do is set up my bank account, my business bank account, add funds from my own money, because again, I haven't made any <laughs> revenue on this yet, but I will, trust me, I will. <laughs> and then when I sign up officially for either Flowdesk or ConvertKit, depending on which one I end up liking better, then that money will be pulled from my business bank account, not from my personal bank account, which just feels cleaner on a subscription service. So those are my big goals for the month of June. I know a lot of these aren't explicitly creative goals, but don't you worry, in between all of these things, I will definitely still be making time to do lots of painting and creating because that's just kind of like an underlying part of all of this. So don't fret, I'm still gonna be doing lots of painting, lots of pattern making. All right, so that brings us to the end of my goals list for June. So let's do a quick recap. 
Okay, my first goal is to write two or maybe three more articles for my website to get it ready to be published in July. Woohoo! <laughs> my second goal is to set up the layouts for one to two collections or mini collections in my portfolio in InDesign. So that's very exciting. My third goal is to set up my business bank account. Woohoo! And then related to that, my fourth goal is to start a free trial of Flowdesk and ConvertKit and hopefully by July I can come back to you and tell you which one I'm sticking with. So that brings us to the very end of the video. So thank you so much for sticking with me all the way through this one. And just a reminder that I'm going to be creating more non-big goals little steps videos on this channel going forward. So if there's anything that you'd really like to see from me, please let me know in the comments and I will add that to my list of videos that I'd love to make. If you don't already follow me on Instagram, you can find me there at Pepo Studios. I'm there all the time. I'm posting lots of updates about these goals as I go along and my pattern process and then, you know, things like my cats and whatever else you want to see about in my life too. So thank you again for watching and I will see you very soon for my next video. Bye everyone.